It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Assistant Athletic Directors of Athletic Communications at Chiron, Evan Carpenter. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Can you talk about how you got started in college athletics? Yeah, I, I started uh, in college athletics uh, my freshman year in college here at Chiron. Um, you know, growing up, you know, just like every kid, you know, you play as many sports as you can. Uh, and my my freshman year, um, you know, I attended a, a sporting event, and um, from from there, just got the got introduced uh, in, into uh, the I guess the behind the scenes aspect of, of athletics, you know, always been on the forefront of it, but never behind the scenes to see how that worked. And, um, you know, from, from that first sporting event on, um, you know, just the, the love and the passion uh, just continued to grow. Can you talk about, of course, how you knew that you wanted to work in the athletic communication side? Uh, I, I started out my college career wanting to do athletic training. Um, I knew my playing days were over. Um, and, and so I, I wanted to do uh, athletic training. But uh, like I said, I, I started uh, that first sporting event and um, got introduced to uh, the statistics, the, uh, the public address uh, side of it. Um, and, and as my four years uh, here at Chowan, um, you know, continued, it, it was just the, the more and more um, that I wanted to, to continue to do that. And, um, you know, I, I have a front row seat to, to some of the, the best shows in town, and, and I don't have to pay for it. Can you talk about, of course, what the day-to-day -day is like as an athletic communications um, right now, now it's, uh, it's a little hectic, uh, you know, with, uh, COVID protocols and things like that. But, um, the, the day to day in a, in a normal year is, uh, you know, you're, you're getting ready for, um, game days. Um, you know, in the fall, you're getting ready for soccer, football and volleyball, um, whether that's collecting rosters from opposing schools, um, sending rosters to opposing schools, making sure that uh, you have reliable internet for live stats and, and video, uh, making sure uh, your, your scoreboards work um, and, and things like that. Uh, in the spring and, or in the winter, you know, you've got, uh, for us, we have basketball and swimming. Uh, it's the, the same thing. Uh, in the spring, uh, we have baseball, softball, men's and women's lacrosse, uh, men's and women's tennis, um, baseball and softball going on. And so there you're just trying to, to, to manage uh, all of that, uh, limit the amount of times that uh, we have cancellations because of weather. Um, but, you know, day to day, it, it's more of uh, just preparing for those game days. Can you talk about, of course, in COVID, like what is happening in the athletic communication side on COVID wise when cancellation games and stuff like that? Yeah, so um, we, we had that happen this week. Uh, we had an opposing school um, and through their protocols, they're unable to play. Um, and so, um, you know, we, we just try to, you know, we, we don't want to throw somebody under the bus, uh, and, and so to speak, um, you know, we just put a, a general blanket release out there. Hey, uh, the game on Saturday uh, has been postponed uh, due to um, COVID protocol. 
both teams are, are going to try and reschedule at a later date, um, especially when it's a conference game. Uh, but yeah, so we, we try to provide um, the, the, the fan base uh, as much information as possible, but without revealing too much information as well. Can you talk about, of course, like whenever the process between getting an interview on a podcast or like a radio station, what is protocol for that? Uh, normally when um, the media or a member of a media wants to reach out and talk to a coach, sometimes they, they uh, reach out directly to a coach or they will reach out to myself or someone in the position. Um, and then from there, we just kind of work with the coach or whoever uh, is selected to try and, uh, you know, make that happen. Um, you know, work, work between, uh, you know, the, the media schedule as well as the coaches or players um, and, and, and just try, try to make things work as best as possible. Um, you know, I, I've always been told that uh, any publicity is good publicity, um, but there, there are some things that we do try to shy away from, but, uh, but those are few and far between. Can you talk about, of course, the process, like for me, like where I'm not ESPN or national podcast ways, is the same protocol the same thing or is it a little bit different whenever it's a local? Uh, I, I think it's a little bit different. Um, obviously, uh, the more national uh, or regional um, outlets, you, you try to, to make that happen. Um, you, you know, 95% uh, uh, of the time you're trying to slide into that, into whoever's schedule as possible. Um, more, more locally, not that, uh, you know, the, the local guys uh, don't matter, um, but to, to some, it, it's not that important, um, but, but we do try to, to make all requests possible, um, no matter how small. Can you talk about, of course, what you do um, for the official website and social media? Uh, so, so my job, uh, I basically, anything that comes through GoCUHawks.com or uh, on social media of at CU Hawks uh, comes through my office. And, and like I said, we're, we're the, the, the website and social media is the face of Chuan Athletics. And, um, you know, we have to we have to tell our story um, in the good times and the bad. Um, you know, we, we do try to skew everything into a positive light. Um, sometimes that's harder than others, but, uh, but we do, we do try to, to make everything as positive, positive as possible. Can you talk about, of course, your time as a sports information director at Convent College? Yeah, Converse was my, my first full-time position. Um, it's a all women's college in Spartanburg, South Carolina, uh, a member of the conference Carolinas as uh, probably most of your viewers know. Um, and, uh, you know, it was an interesting experience, um, you know, with, with them being all female, uh, trying to get the media to, to come to, uh, to games or to cover uh, was was pretty tough. Um, they they didn't have have a lot of uh, success in the past, and so when there was success, um, it, it was still hard to to get them to to come out. And uh, my first year, the the women's soccer program won um, was a eleven one and one uh, before the media even came out. Uh, and, and the team ended up winning the regular season uh, uh, title. Um, and, and, you know, a, after that, uh, you know, teams got pushed back, you know, to the basically the back page. Now we would get, you know, a small little blurb in the, in the newspaper, but, um, you know, it, it was tough. But, but I was able to, to learn uh, a lot of the job and how to do it by myself. Um, and, and how, how to be that one-man shop. Of course, like before COVID, was, 
were you talking to a lot of your conference um, SIDs on a regular basis whenever scheduling happened? Yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously in athletic communications, the biggest part of our job is communicating. Um, we do talk, uh, you know, uh, amongst the, the groups in a mass or individually. Um, but normally when, when there's a schedule change, we, we get it probably from our coaches um, and then uh, the occasional email from, uh, you know, the SID saying, hey, this game was moved. Um, you know, so, so it kind of went twofold, but, but now we're, we're in kind of constant communication of, you know, hey, I heard this is going on. You know, what, what are you guys doing um, in, in terms of trying to reschedule? Um, but, but yeah, it's, this time is very, very fluid. Can you talk about, of course, the process between, um, I heard that a lot of schools are opting out of like maybe their basketball season or spring season. What is the process in deciding that? Um, I think it, it's more just for the, the safety of the student athlete. Um, you know, whether testing uh, is available, uh, whether the funds to get testing is available as well. Um, you know, w our, our president and, and uh, administration uh, want our student athletes to play, uh, but in a safe environment. Uh, so far, we, we've been able to do that. Um, and, and we have that guidance from uh, the Conference Carolinas administration as well. Um, they're wanting to, to play and, and give those student athletes a chance to play, uh, but it has to be in a safe environment. And we know that uh, some sports are, are more riskier than others uh, as our football team, um, and the CIAA has decided that uh, it's not safe to play. Um, and so uh, they have the, the entire 2021 season off uh, and will be back on the field and uh, hopefully uh, fall of 2021. But, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's definitely um, dictated by our administration. And obviously they have uh, help of experts um, and, and hope of, playing safely. Can you talk about your role at Charlotte University as the media relations assistant? Yeah, so at uh, Charlotte, I was able to um, kind of get my foot in the door uh, as a full-time uh, person. Uh, it was an internship uh, at UNC Charlotte, and um, I, I was able to um, kind of see the ins and outs of, of how how things at a division one school really worked. Um, my main uh, sports were cross country, indoor and outdoor track and field uh, and softball, but uh, also uh, was able to help with men's and women's soccer, uh, men's basketball uh, and football uh, during their first year of playing. And uh, it, I definitely learned a lot of the things um, that I still use, um, you know, and, and I try to strive to get show on uh, to that point, knowing that, you know, going from uh, D2 to D1 and sponsorship and things like that. But I, I tried to, to make it um, as seamless as possible in, in the best way that I can. During the interview process between, of course, the media and coaches, can you talk about a little bit of what um, the media can and can't ask coaches and what their coaches are responsible for answering? Yeah, I mean, uh, from a media standpoint, I guess they can ask whatever they want. Um, it's just you, you don't want your, your coaches to, to sometimes answer those questions. Um, in terms of what they're not allowed to say, uh, we try not to divulge information in terms of uh, injuries of student athletes. Um, and, and we try to, to, to limit the, the negative um, comments towards opponents or um, officials, things like that. Um, you know, and, and try to, to not allow 
the media to know things that is not public common knowledge already um, and or things that we don't really want to get out there. Can you talk about, of course, what they're allowed and not allowed to say, like on podcasts for whenever it comes to recruitment? Um, they, they can say that they're recruiting uh, in individuals from, I guess, a certain area, um, but unless they have signed uh, a national letter of intent, uh, they're not allowed to, to publicly say that they are recruiting a certain individual um, by name. Uh, so um, that, that's, that's more compliance uh, than, than anything. And I think um, most coaches, uh, unless it's a highly touted prospect uh, are trying to keep those close to the vest as possible. When it comes to, are they okay, like talking about the official visit process? Yeah, I think when it comes to, to the process uh, of how they handle uh, official visits or unofficial visits, um, I think they I think they would be okay to to talk about it. Um, but you know, f for example, if you're coming on an official visit, um, they're not gonna say, "Hey, Brandon." Uh, is coming on an official visit on Friday. Um, you know, he's a, you know, a football player uh, from Goldsboro. You know, we're, we're not try trying to give that information, but to say um, on an official visit, our recruits will catch a game, uh, eat lunch in the, in the calf with the team, um, go through our, our, uh, pre-game uh, warm-ups, things like that, to, so they can see, not necessarily go through it, but be on the sidelines to see how those, uh, how the pre-game warm-ups and how things like that go uh, on game days um, it is more the gist of what they would probably do. For the athletes that are listening, of course, can you talk about whenever they do go on the official visit, are they allowed to like post the photo of maybe them trying on the Chuan jersey for the football or baseball team? Yeah, I, I think, you know, they're promoting themselves, right? And so, um, you know, if, if they want to say that they went on an official visit at Chuan, um, you know, in whatever respective sport, you know, uh, that's good for them. Most of the time, it, it's when they, they've received a an offer, um, a scholarship offer, whether uh, that's to be a preferred walk-on um, or an actual scholarship. Um, you know, I, I think the best thing for, for prospective student athletes is to, to promote themselves, uh, in, obviously in a positive way and, and make sure that uh, the school that they really want to go to uh, notices them. What advice would you give upcoming sports information directors and even athletic communications people looking to get into the industry? Um, it, for, for those that, that want to get into this kind of business, it, it's not all uh, glitz and glamour. Um, it's a thankless job. Um, you know, you're working 40 plus hours a week, sometimes seven days a week. Um, you know, and to, to some people, like they just want a nine to five job. Uh, and, and that doesn't happen here in, in college athletics. Um, you know, there, there's some days where I'm in the office at nine o'clock and I get to leave at four or five o'clock. Uh, but there's some days where I'm in the office at nine o'clock and I'm the last one that shuts the lights off at 10, 11 o'clock at night uh, on game days. Um, and, and that goes with on, on Saturdays as well. Um, you know, Saturdays, Sundays, you know, I, I think, you know, for, for those that love to, to talk about sports and to be around sports and, um, you know, j just continuing to be a part uh, of athletics, even though you can't play, this is probably the best way to do it. You get, you know, you get paid to talk about sports and write about sports. And, and I, I can't think of a better, a better job. That's amazing. Of course, where can my listeners find you at on social media along with Chawan Athletics at? 
you can find Chuan Athletics at CU Hawks on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, I, I don't really have a lot of social media. Uh, on, on Twitter, it's at Evan SID. Um, but, th but that's mainly uh, where I get my news of, of sports, uh, ESPN and things like that. Uh, but I, I very rarely post on social media. Um, and, and most of the time it'll be about Chawana Athletics. Thank you again, Evan, for your interview and best of luck at Chawan in the athletic communications. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Evan, for your interview and best of luck. Hey, right, thanks a lot. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.